Hey team, and welcome to another episode of the Funnel Academy Show. With me, your host, Gavin Bell, and I'm very, very excited to bring a slightly different episode to you today. It's maybe more of a conversational show as opposed to an interview or as, as opposed to a solo show from me, because this week I am bringing on a good friend, Ed. Now, if you're watching live, you will see Ed on your screen. <laughs> now, if you're listening, you won't, but you'll get to hear him in any second. Now, Ed used to work with me or still does work with, with me, but used to be employed by um, us. And we thought we'd jump on to have a conversation to talk a little bit about what it's like working uh, with me, what it's maybe like working with a founder and a startup, because I have some very exciting news. And that exciting news is we are hiring. So we're looking for somebody to handle the operations side of the business, both with the agency and with the Funnel Academy. Um, and so what we want to do is just come on and, and talk a little bit about that and um, talk a little bit about what it's like working with a founder. Here, Ed's journey, which has been a really cool one. Ed's basically gone from uh, living in the Shetland Islands, where I'm from as well, to working with some of the most famous YouTubers in the world. And I want to talk about that, that journey as well. So uh, before I get started, if you are interested in an operations role, then please email me. I would say head to the website for more information, but the website is currently down. So head, uh, email me, gav, G-A-V, at mrgavinbell.com, and we'll send you over some more information. So without further ado, Ed, welcome to the show, sir. Hello, nice to be here. It's, uh, it's good to finally chat. I don't think I've ever done a interview or a live show with somebody else from Shetland. It's normally other people <laughs> that are taking the mick out of my Shetland internet. So, but it looks like your internet is holding up nicely. Yeah, it's. I mean, funnily enough, compared to some, even my friends like in Glasgow, I get like seventy down here. Like on a good day, we have pretty fast internet. So. It's not all that bad, but it, it's funny you said earlier, like from the Shetland Islands to so and so, but it's like currently sat in the Shetland Islands right now. So, not it's all come full circle, really. And I'm sat back here. <laughs> There's no place better to be than your parents for lockdown, right? That's can't say much more than that, mate. Can't say much getting more. Getting all that. of that, getting all of that reset mutton soup, I hope. <laughs> My parents are both English, so that's not coming. Oh. <laughs> um, for anyone doesn't know what reasted mutton soup it is like what dried lamb salted lamb yeah i think so and then like patties yeah, and stuff. it's a shetland delicacy and it is absolutely wonderful i absolutely yeah, love took it took a bannock in there and you're sorted absolutely so ed give us a little bit of a, an introduction as to you and your journey because I, I mean i've known you now for a few years and watched your journey and it's been a fun one so let everybody know what that has looked like yeah, so uh, I'm Ed, as Gav calls me, but on socials and stuff, it, it's Edward Joe. So uh, it's kind of how some people know me. And yeah, from uh, Shetland, not originally, I was like born down in England, but I grew up all my life in Shetland. And uh, yeah, it's kind of sort of sum up the journey. When I was about 14, 15, I started getting into um, video. And it was around that age, I sort of just started taking it a bit more seriously. Kind of prior to that, I've always been um like gaff says about his like entrepreneurial like the entrepreneurial kid i've always been that kind of like techie kid and sort of interested in computers and, and learning new things so kind of like even 12 to 15 i was messing around with music and and all these like different things on computers and i remember just video standing out to me and kind of playing around with editing and animation and sort of stuck and then when i was about 16 uh and you know kind of in scotland you can leave school at 16 and exams are coming around and i basically did the opposite of what I should have done. When everyone sort of, you know, works towards their exams and then puts the most effort in, I did pretty well through school and then got to my exams and just sort of went, no, <laughs> and, and didn't really um, put all that much effort in purely because I, I was kind of just thinking of like a, a bigger goal. So I knew I wanted to leave school. I knew kind of wanted to get away from Shetland and, uh, and sort of pursue this dream of doing like content video, had my kind of eye on social media and, it just sort of grew from there. So I did a year up here working on um, kind of saving money and then doing a course so I could come down to Glasgow. And then I moved to Glasgow August 2018 when I was 17 years old. And yeah, that was the time when I took on the job with Gav after we met. Did we meet start of 2018, I think? Yeah, I think we worked on the Up Hell Yeah. Yeah, I thought, I thought that's what it was. 
yeah. To, to uh, preface, uh, I was a massive fan of Gav, like prior to um, I was actually meeting because like he was doing so well on Facebook and doing all the Scottish stuff. And you came up to Shetland a couple of times and we never really met. And then when that kind of Uphelia thing happened, then we met and just sort of, I think that was my little like starry eyed 16 year old looking at like a 22 year old entrepreneur. I was like, oh, I want to be like him. Oh, uh, So yeah, it was, it was a cool meeting for sure. Yeah, so it's been a fun, I guess it's been a fun journey for both of us because when we first met, it was, you know, I had obviously had the business, but the content I was creating was all the Scottish based content, which is, which then led us to meet because you were working on that same project. And it's kind of funny because you, you say that you look, you looked at me like that. I, I was looking down at you going, bloody hell. I, I, I used to be known as the kind of young guy and now I'm no longer the young guy. And you're the young guy and you're way more talented than i am when i was that age it's like oh i can't i'm not going to swear but that, that's kind of what <laughs> going through, right it, do you know it's but, weird uh, like i don't want to get older I, I think we've joked about this before like there's something really nice and, and people will be like oh so egotistical but believe me when it happens to you it's really nice when you go into like a meeting or an event and you start talking with someone and they're doing like this that and the other and they've studied this and they're doing this job and you're like, oh yeah, I'm so and so, and I'm 17, and they're like, oh really? And for most people, I mean, I'm six foot three, so I don't really look 17, uh, or didn't, or didn't look 17 at the time. Sorry, um, I'm 19 now, but yeah, it's it's age is such like a weird thing, and you're kind of like, it's a bit of like an ego drive thing to be like doing uh, like be at a certain level by a certain age. Yeah, I think for, I think it's uh, I quite like being the underdog. I think that's probably the best way I can put it. Is you know when you're maybe. Um, you're doing well, but you're 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 younger. It's pe people don't expect you to be able to do as well, perhaps. Or that's that's at least how I felt back in the day. Um, yeah. But now I'm at that age. I feel like I feel like that's not actually the case. And I think people are way more supportive than I maybe thought they were back in the day. So yeah, let's definitely. Talk bit, let's talk a bit about when you first decided to to jump on board with us. Um, because it was it was a few years ago we basically were hired we were looking for an intern and we hired adopt an intern to uh, do the process for us and then you happened to put in an application which was kind of cool and we filtered through all the different um people and, and the videos and things that people had sent in and it was kind of funny that you came out on top as being from shetland so what led you to want to work with you know a uh, at the time a relatively small company as opposed to maybe a large agency yeah so I, i'm not sure if you remember this but i i think kind of around the time when you put out live um it was like it was one of those things that I, it was it like a business development intern it wasn't even specifically content related was it it was quite a general role i think it was pretty general with a focus on content yeah um, like writing and things wasn't it um or like with a focus on that side but it, it was it was quite a general role like it was um it was an internship kind of thing it, you could do it remotely but had to commute like somewhat close it was a part-time thing and i remember it just came up and i don't think i actually would have applied if my friend hadn't sent me the screenshot of the tweet like it, it was ridiculous how you know the chances happens my friend sent me the screenshot and was like oh look so and so uh who like I mean, both watched you and kind of a lot of Shetland knows you because you're targeted ads <laughs> but um yeah like a lot of people knew you and and kind of I've been following you for that time and we've met briefly and we always said we were going to kind of do some stuff together and I told probably told you at the time that I wanted to come south but that coming up I was just like well I need a job kind of like whilst I'm down in Glasgow I don't really fancy transferring from Tesco uh, in Shetland for, to Tesco in Glasgow so I was like well what have I got to lose I'll just like send you an email or like send an email to a thing and see what happens and yeah i remember a uh, little fun fact for you i think i think i got the acceptance to the job i took out my phone while stacking shells in tesco and uh yeah, I think I remember yeah, that. that's such like a heroic like that's such like a typical you know like a cliche story but literally i was just like there putting things in the shelf and then it was just like email came up gavin bell and i remember just reading it and i was like i had like four hours left in my shift just being like all i want to do right now is just like chuck my uh, uniform in it's like right see ya um and yeah it was bizarre so i i definitely i think i applied because I, I already knew you i kind of were at the time when you're doing the scottish stuff i was like well 
this dude is like wanting to take like content to the world. He's doing lots of like travel stuff. And that was kind of like what I was interested in at the time. And I was like wanting to join to be part of the whole travel thing, um, which obviously then later changed massively. And you sent me like kind of your influence sent me on a different path as well. But yeah, it was just like, just because I knew and I kind of needed it and it would have added to, like I said before, I was, I was going to study in Glasgow and I got my place for that course, but I just sort of needed a, a bit of side income really to actually live as a student. Um, so yeah, but it was, it was a crazy kind of how it came about. And I'm sure you'll say as well, that it didn't end up being that even like three months in, um, it just evolved so quickly and I'm, I'm kind of forever glad that it did. And it wasn't just like, Oh, a, uh, business development intern role it kind of grew and grew and grew and we sort of grew together and you developed and yeah it was it was an absolutely massive year to be honest yeah i think you joined a funny time in business where you say so we're, we're at the time but the main content output we we're putting out was around like scottish outdoor stuff and we were probably getting what i don't know 50, at least fifty thousand views a week per view on facebook and it was it was absolutely it's great to think about it and mm. uh and then we do this, I just came to this realization. I was like, right, I love creating the Scottish stuff, but it's not doing anything to grow the business. Other, like, oh, my fan base right now is, you know, like American <laughs> grannies who just, you know, at the end of the day, they're just not going to buy my services, are they? So <laughs> we took this massive shift and going back to kind of marketing business oriented content. And it was quite challenging, at, you know, at first because you go from getting 50,000 views a week to like 50. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember I did things like run an ad to people that liked my Facebook page saying, I'm no longer creating Scottish based content anymore. So please unlike this page if that's what you want. <laughs> um, Mad. Which if you looked at the statistics of how many unlikes I got from the page is probably the most unsuccessful, successful ad campaign I've ever ran in my life. And, um, so that was a lot of fun, but like, so yeah. So you're you're basically involved in this massive transformation, which I think probably you know speaks to you know what it's like working for a small business. You know where there's where yeah. we're now at, at the time. I think it was literally just me. Now we've got we're speaking off air about five or six people that work for the business on a freelance basis. So the team's definitely grown, but at the time it was. I mean, that change in just the content was a massive transformation in the whole whole business, wasn't it? And we got involved in branding with Call Gray and mm -hmm. uh, lots of fun stuff. So after that, you then um, headed down south and you started working with some you know, <laughs> 50,000 views a week sound like absolute pennies. Talk a lot about <laughs> that journey after. So, yeah. Um, so we, I think like it was... Um, it was sort of like a natural progression. So when I was coming to the end of my course and um, we'd been, so I've been with you since August and this is kind of like May, June time last year, I think you were deciding to pivot another way and I was like wanting to go off and do all this stuff. So that was sort of just like a natural, a natural movement. And with me finishing my course, I was like, well, I don't want to be in Glasgow anymore. I want to like try something bigger. And yeah, so it, kind of to, to move on, I basically, Finished in June, I moved home, uh, moved like a lot of the stuff out of my flat. And for the entirety of June, I did nothing. And the uh, the dream of, uh, you know, like going off and doing big things sort of just fell flat on its face. And kind of for the whole month of June, I just like didn't have any motivation. And I was like, well, if this is what's going to be like, it's, it's going to be really tough. I'll have to like, you know, get a job. Or do, like there was genuinely thoughts of like, well, I may as well pack this in now. And it was, even though it was only a month, it was just quite disheartening to kind of, we were on such a high, I think. And then when I was like, oh, I'm going to go off my own way and it just sort of like fell flat. So that was kind of me back in Chetland for June. And then I think it would have been beginning of July. So literally probably, a, yeah, beginning of July time, I saw this thing go up on Julius' story. He was looking for like a videographer and an editor. And this is Julius' theme, by the way. Um, and uh, for those that don't know, he's a magician and kind of like social creator. And uh, yeah, he put up a thing from his Instagram story and was like, oh, I'm looking for a videographer, videographer and an editor. And I literally just fired an email and sent like bits of stuff I'd done with you and like other random freelance bits. And yeah, I didn't hear anything for like a week. And then about a week later, um, 
I get an email back and it's like, oh, uh, I'm Julius's manager. He'd like to speak to you. Uh, let's, he'll, he'll definitely be in touch soon. Again, and then I heard nothing for like a few days. And I was like, well, this is probably not going to go anywhere. And then at like eight o'clock in the morning, I was getting my running shoes on, you know, I'm going to go out for my run. And I get like a phone call from like Julius directly. And we just spoke for like an hour and a half, probably like, yeah, an hour, an hour and a half. And he was like, it was like two in the morning where he was. I was like about to go out the house and we just sort of chatted and that like one chat um, progressed into the, the time into work because I was going back to Glasgow to basically uh, end the lease of my flat, like my accommodation, move the rest of my stuff home. And I was like, well, I've got a few days. If you want to hang out in London, that'd be great. And that hanging out in London, then like we met, everything went well. Uh, I came back to Glasgow for a day and, and it's funny, I always want to tell the story. So I, I went down for the weekend did some filming, hung out, got to meet his kind of team and stuff, and it was great. And then a day later, when I was back in Glasgow, and I got the train up, I get a phone call, and he was like, uh, are you free tomorrow? I was like, yeah. And he was like, well, so we need someone to help in the studio. We're going to film some studio stuff. Can you get it down here tomorrow morning? And I was like, yeah. Like, it was it was just like a, a weird kind of time. And flew down the next day, spent two days in London again, and yeah, I remember like the second day I was awake for like 22 hours. I remember like I stayed up like most of the night and then got a flight back to Glasgow, kind of like, I think it was like a Thursday or something. And I'd been up for like 22 hours and I slept the entire day. Um, and it was just like an absolute wild ride. And, and that job sort of led into me doing more stuff for him, did um, did a couple of trips. And yeah, Julius is now one of my really close friends and we still keep in touch and do bits and pieces together more on kind of like the social management side, less kind of like in the video and editing. Um, and yeah, so that, that was a ridiculous experience to happen kind of so soon after Glasgow and kind of us parting ways. Yes, I think it also speaks a lot to the the importance of, you know, showing up yourself on social and when you see people posting things, uh, jumping on and you know when you see uh you know people you follow want to work with reaching out to them and even just an instagram dm can can go a long way so yeah it's, it's cool to hear that story awesome persistence cool. well, is we... everything like yeah, yeah. It's, it's absolutely massive and uh, i think you'll know as well like I, even when i didn't really know you i was probably messaging you um julius like always tells the same joke like i was messaging him and I, I I know you've asked about it, so like to quickly say uh, what I've just come off recently. I've just done four months in Sheffield with Morgs, who's like a UK YouTuber, and how that job came about uh, came about was literally just me bombarding his manager, um, who, are, who I'm now friends with, but at the time probably hated me because like over the summer when um, so yeah, kind of like August last year when stuff calmed down a bit with Julius, Morgan had his festival, uh, which was a big like two day festival in Sheffield. I basically bombarded his manager and was like, look, I'm around kind of film it and that's also bizarre because i think like morgs is sort of because he's like controversial content but it's like he's put on this pedestal sort of being like unreachable so like when i got to like know the family and stuff and people that that was a big shift and i don't know i don't really talk about it but it was strange because people like spoke to me or i guess i got following a little bit because of julius but like morgs was like on a whole other level because like his fan base are so young and like he's so widely spoken about and people use him in titles and clickbait all the time. And then when I got to like, kind of like know the family on like a personal level and like him as a really close friend, like I didn't really see him, like what, how people perceive him. So that was really bizarre how fast that changed. And I ended up moving in and living with them from beginning of November till my 19th birthday end of February. So that was a bizarre experience. Um, and still to this day, probably getting about five to 10 new followers a day, which is just, kids requesting to say hi on my instagram so that's there for life now really yeah it's funny it's funny perception is reality isn't it you, mm. you, you think you look at people and then you meet them and you realize they're just people at the end of the day yeah totally like i, I think i had that sort of pre like perceived thing i was like oh i wonder what it's gonna be like and i met him and i was like oh wait did it actually sound we're both the same age and family were lovely and yeah it was it was an insane four months and the opportunities i got to go like out to la and yeah, lots of filming and like his his manager as well, like helped me a lot and it's kind of helped my career progress afterwards. So yeah, it's crazy when you kind of meet people and, and get to know them truly. And the same really goes with Julius as well. Um, Cause at the end of the day, they might have like a large following, but that's irrelevant because like that that's they are just people like you just said. 
Yeah, awesome. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. So give everybody, uh, let everyone know where they can hear, learn more about you. Maybe, um, I mean, if you go and check out my videos of <laughs> what, 2018, 19-ish era, that's mm. um, or the latest video that was posted, uh, what day are we on? 18th of May, then you can get a taste yeah. of what Ed does. But where can everyone find you, Ed? Uh, at Edward Joe on pretty much all socials. It's just Edward, but with two Ds because Edward Joe was taken. Um, and if you Google it, my website will come up. Everything's edwardjoe.com. Everything is, yeah, pretty much falls along that same lines. Um, but one thing I do want to say, though, and kind of even though like ending it is, from your perspective, kind of we've talked about, about me, what was it like hiring someone that was kind of really young and kind of uh, when you met me for the first couple of times, what was it? like uh hiring someone like that and when when you you know sent over the uh, acceptance thing what was kind of like going through your head at the time yeah good question we had um the the hiring process was quite fun because one of the as, as you know basically for somebody to get that job what they had to do was a uh, cv cover letter then they had to film a video and and send a video in as a you know i'm obviously hiring for a role where people are creating video what to see what what it was mm -hmm. and there was some really strong i mean there were some terrible people but there was some really strong <laughs> stuff there as well and um if i you know if i'm honest like looking at the age thing i, di I didn't i didn't care about the age at all always really kind of interested mm -hmm. as how good is that person at what they do um and then i feel like for you know for me and and this goes for this job that we're hiring for just now is i think that the, I mean, I, I would say I'm probably quite easy to work for. You might disagree, Ed, <laughs> but, but you know, I'm. I really much encourage people to lead their own way. Um, and yeah. you know, for example, when we were creating the video content, I'd, I'd, I really appreciated it when you were kind of directing where you thought the videos should go. So, and and you were great at that. Um, which was really valuable and i think that that's the that's the key thing for me when i'm looking for someone is is that person willing to you know take a stance and take a lead and go where they think mm. is best as opposed to just what i think because especially i think when it comes to a role such as video editing or filming is you know that person's hiring that you or that whoever it is because they need help to make their videos better right and yeah hiring somebody just to hold the camera isn't really a you know there's there is skill involved but i think the real skill comes from somebody being able to go actually that take wasn't very good so let's do the take again or yeah i'm actually seeing this trend in the video space i think we need to go this way with that video and that's not a good idea that's a fantastic mm -hmm. idea i think that's really where the benefit comes in so i think for me like there's numerous things i kind of learned from that year but um a couple of them being and, and you said it earlier, like not caring about the age thing, like you, you kind of like forced me to be older, or I guess what people perceive as older, like it was such a responsibility hit. So whilst kind of when I'm you know, talking about being a student, like whilst my friends are out and about, I was like, oh, wait, so I've got a deadline at five. Uh, <laughs> we're doing this tomorrow. Like not to the extent he's like working me to death, but it was just like it, it, it kind of, you know, aged me up a bit and, and made me think about things because, um, you know, it was responsibilities. Um, but I think you'll agree and i suppose you can say a bit more but it was like that year was a massive test like i, I think we had like our kind of uh or your kind of like niche you were going for you were like okay this is kind of what i'm thinking of doing but we were just trying out like so many different styles of content with like and our main sort of focus that year was the kind of vlog but then even towards the end we were doing kind of more like um instructional videos like we were, we were just firing stuff out um and seeing what worked and i think like and you um, probably agree like anyone that's kind of wanting to go down the content route I think like just try things you really 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 can't be perfect like first time and you've probably said this countless times like you can't be f perfect with your videos or whatever from the get-go like you just have to keep trying and keep trying which is what we did and I mean I was trying I remember at one point we were thinking about doing like daily Instagram posts and all this sort of stuff and it was all about just testing it and, and seeing what works so it's, it's interesting um be interesting to hear what kind of what you thought about like the whole testing process throughout the year just trying different types of content and trying different like techniques yeah i think it's and that's all it all it really is isn't it i think 
all you, all you have to all you can do is really test is you know you yeah. make an assumption that you know this video or this piece of content is going to do well and you post it and then you see that it does terribly so you then have to go yeah. right why why didn't it do well or you know this video is doing really really well why is this video doing well and just go mm-hmm. i mean if we go back to the scottish stuff and that's that's really all i did with the scottish yeah. stuff was you know posting and going i got to the point with the scottish videos of watching other people that were creating similar content and doing well and writing doing right they spoke on camera for six seconds <laughs> Then there was a four-minute segment, a four-second segment with music. Then there was a B-roll segment that, you know, I got super geeky on all of that because, yeah. you know, like that's, I mean, it's the only way to improve. And um, yeah. I think it comes, whether it's video or anything, that's that's the case, isn't it? So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's just about trying things out. And I think uh, any advice for anyone that's applying uh, for Gav is just be a go-getter. Try and do things yourself. Um, don't expect to have everything hand delivered. Basically, just yeah. you know, have have input. People, I think any, and this doesn't just go for gather. Anyone that's kind of like a a one man band for a while or has their own business, like, is going to expect people to have that sort of startup mentality. Um, if you kind of want to just feel like you're in an office, go join an agency with 100 people. Um, like, yeah, definitely. If you're working in small groups or like one to one, like everything is about kind of being being a go getter and kind of having that startup mentality yeah absolutely so and um, for anyone that's listening right now and never caught the beginning of it uh we are currently hiring for an operations role and if you're interested in, in learning more about that we can send you over all the information just email me gav g-a-v at mr gavin bell and we'll send you over the information ed thanks so much for coming on it's been a it's been a pleasure catching up and, and chatting yeah it's been it's been cool to kind of uh See how we've both changed and progressed over the last couple of years. And let's uh, let's hope that continues to to happen. See you yeah. there, everyone. Let's hope it does.